I'm also in answer class and I know the lesson. Let me tell you. Wait for the teacher dinner. Good morning, teacher. Good morning, friends. Welcome to our Sunday school. Thank you, Jude. Good morning, boys and girls. I hope you had a good week and we are looking forward to your lessons this morning. Before we start our lessons, uh, Jude will pray for us and Janet will tell us what will follow next. Let us pray. Thank you, Jesus, for today. Thank you for everything you've done. Thank you for all teaching our friends. Teach us this lesson. Write it in our heart. Make us to be the do of your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Jude. We will now listen to some of our friends singing and also some playing instruments. Some will then recite the memory for us. Happy, Happy listening! listening. <laughs> children and welcome to your primary pal i'm sure you had a fantastic week god bless you the title of our lesson today is god made it all and guess what our bible text is found in the very first book of the bible which is genesis we shall be reading from Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 to 18. We'll read along as we study the lesson. Hmm, have you ever wondered where everything came from? The sun and the moon, where did they come from? What about the animals, the elephant, the lion, the kangaroo? Where did they come from? What about the plants and flowers? The spinach that you enjoy? Where did they come from? What about the king of the universe? You and I? Where did we come from? Have you ever had a thought about this? <laughs> Not to worry. The Bible got the answer. 
from the very first page of the Bible. It says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth too, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters free. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. Five. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning was the first day. Thank you very much, Andre, for that beautiful reading. Oh, look! Look at that! I just made this beautiful donut. Mmm, yummy! You know, before I made this donut, I made use of some ingredients, like the flowers, some sugar, some butter, some eggs, and lastly, I use some milk plus vegetable oil, which means for me to create this donut, I had to make use of some ingredients. But with God, He only spoke. Just by speaking, God created the whole wide world. Remember, God spent only six days to create this beautiful world that you and I enjoy today. So, what happened on day one? There was darkness everywhere and the world was full of water. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God divided the light from darkness. The light he called the day and darkness the night. So, when it is sunning, we say, oh, it's the day. And when it is dark, we say, it is night time. That's what happened on day one. And at the end of day one, God looked at everything he had created. And behold, they were all good. Yes. So, what happened on day two? On the second day, God made the sky with the clouds in it. How did this happen? God actually caused like a ceiling to separate the water from the world, from the water above the world, to form the sky. That is the sky, children. Another name for sky is the firmament or heaven. The sky on day two. And at the end of day two, God looked at everything he had created. And behold, they were all good. Now is day three. God is still at work. So, Nifemi, tell us what happened on day three. Genesis chapter 1 verse 9. And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. Verse 11. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, 
and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. Verse 13, And the evening and the morning were the third day. Thank you very much, Nifemi. On day three, God created the land. Look at that. How did it happen? God said, let all the water in the world be gathered into one place. It was only a command. And all the water in the world were pushing, pushing into one place. And there was a dry land coming out and God called the dry land the earth and the gathering of water the sea children how many sea do you know in the UK we have the Irish Sea the English Channel we also have the North Sea and the most popular of them all is the Atlantic Ocean you remember? Oh yes! Those are some of the seas on day three. God created the land on day three. Not only that did God make on day three. He also caused the land to bring forth fruits, the grasses, the herbs, the trees, God just commanded and they all sprang up, the trees sprang up, the grass sprang up, the herbs sprang up on the land. God is the Holy One that can make things like that to happen. Oh, what a mighty God! And at the end of day three, God looked at everything he had created. And behold, they were all good. <laughs> now it's day four. God isn't done yet. So, Nife, tell us what happened on day four. Genesis chapter 1 verse 14. And God said, let there be lights in the moment of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years and 19 and the evening of the of the morning were the fourth day thank you Nife on day four God created two great lights the sun and the moon. God made the sun to shine during the day to give us light. And he also created the moon to give us a lesser light in the dark so that we don't stumble. Remember children, no matter how dark it is out there, you and I can still walk about. That is the work of God. He also created some stars too. God is good. And at the end of day four, God looked at everything he had created. And behold, they were all good. Well done. What happened on day five and day six? What did God create? Also, did God create anything on the seventh day? Watch out for next week when we shall study another beautiful lesson titled God's Beautiful World, Lesson 2B. Watch out for her activities, pages 2 to 5, find and circle the words in the puzzle. For ages 6 to 8, write down some of the activities you like doing during the daytime. Also, why do you think 
God created the night. Write your answers on the line. God bless you. That is the end of our lesson. Thank you for coming and thanks for listening too. See you next week. Bye. The heart of him that have understanding seeketh knowledge. Proverbs chapter 15 verse 14. Good morning boys and girls. Welcome to your answer class. I believe you had a nice and blessed week. God bless you. The title of the lesson is Only One Answer. Please say after me, Only One Answer. We pray that God will teach us by himself in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The text for the lesson is taken from the book of Proverbs, chapter 2, verses 1 to 9. Our friends, Veronica and Anthony, will be reading for us. Please, let us open our Bibles and read along with them. Proverbs chapter 2, verses 1 to 5. 1. My son, if thou wilt receive my commandments, hide with thee. 2. So that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom, and apply thine heart to understanding. 3. Yea, if thou crest after knowledge, and lifteth up thy voice for understanding. 4. If thou seekest her as silver, and searcheth her as for hid treasures. 5. Then shalt thou understand the fear of, of Lord, and find knowledge of God. Proverbs chapter 3 verses 6 to 9. 6. For the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. 7. He layeth up with sound wisdom for the righteousness. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. He keepeth the path, the path of judgment and preserveth the way of his saints. 9. Then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and equality, yea, every good path. Well done, Veronica and Antony. That was a very good reading. God bless you both. Boys and girls, look at some books I've got on the table. There are different types. We have books on engineering, aircrafts, web design, story collections, as well as the Holy Bible. Each one has to be opened and studied to get knowledge from them. Note that there are different books you read at different stage in life. They are burdened at some point as you grow. However, the Holy Bible stands out. You need it all the days of your life. You read it in order to give you knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. From the Bible passage, we have read, King Solomon made us to know that wisdom is given by God, and that from the mouth of God, there is knowledge and understanding. So when we read the word of God, we find knowledge and understanding, which when acted upon, God will give us wisdom. Boys and girls, from the lesson story, Dego's class was engaged in an essay on the search for knowledge titled, What Spell Sources? What Spell Sources? Dego became anxious as their teacher, Mrs. Adams, commented that some writers have taken a very unusual approach to the research question. Where should I begin my search for knowledge? As she handed over the essay 
to the class. Dego worked hard to stay top in his class. So he approached his essay based on three research areas, books, philosophies, and experience. Dego concluded that among the books available for his research, the Bible is the best book ever written. The philosophical principles became a natural way of living and his experience of salvation gave him a whole new understanding and approach to life. Mrs. Adam was so impressed and happy on his essay and graded it A with the remark, good job, Dego, stick to your beliefs. Boys and girls, let us answer these few questions to have more understanding of this lesson. What is knowledge? Knowledge is a familiarity, awareness, or understanding of someone or something such as facts, skills, or objects. How can it be acquired? We can acquire knowledge by listening, teaching, practice, even just as we are doing now in Sunday school or Bible studies. Where can it be acquired? We can acquire knowledge from home or at school or just as we are doing now in the church. What is wisdom? This is the ability to make decisions based on the combination of knowledge, experience, and understanding. Why is the search or pursuit for human knowledge not able to satisfy so? Human knowledge is very limited to man's understanding because God is the creator of the soul and thus man cannot satisfy that soul. Boys and girls, do you think they go in our answer story, did right to express his views in the team paper? Definitely yes. How can we show to others that we consider knowledge of God important? By telling others about God at any opportunity we have and let them know that wisdom comes from God alone who has the right answer to every question at any point in time. This leads us to our key statement that says, God has all the answers. Say after me, please. God has all the answers. The lesson activity for the week is to write some of the things you have learned from studying God's word. That is the end of our lesson. God bless you. For next week's lesson, we shall be studying lesson 59. And the title is Tempers Flared. Tempers Flared. Let us pray. In Jesus' name. Lord, Heavenly Father, we are so grateful to you. Thank you for primary power lesson. Thank you for answer class lesson. Jesus, thank you for your spirit, O oh Lord. Thank you for your presence in our classes today. We know that you have taught us, O oh Lord. And we pray that you should help us, Almighty God, to be the doers of your words. God, please bless our parents. Jesus, please bless our teachers. Bless every one of us. And at last, O oh Lord, write our names in the book of life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bye. God bless you. Thank you, boys and girls, for joining today's Sunday School. We hope and pray you enjoyed. Have a wonderful week ahead. God bless you.